The triangular relationship between clients, image and therapist has long been a metaphor for the dynamic relationship between the principal components. Each of the three points of the therapeutic triangle are of equal value, but materials do not figure in the equation. It is clear that materials are of central importance to the process of art therapy. Surprisingly, there is very little literature focused on their impact and how the properties of different mediums might affect the client and their therapeutic journey. It is suggested that art materials are taken for granted and art therapists generally lack awareness or interest in the power of different art materials. This has done a great disservice to the field of art therapy research and to clients who might be nourished by them. Only a handful of universities offering courses in art therapy include study on the therapeutic properties and the uses of materials. Some preferring to focus on engagement with materials and others on the process of image making. Derby University prioritises on the centrality of the image. Why is it that most art therapy courses don't include it? The lack of research and understanding leaves many unanswered questions. Therefore, I have chosen to explore the different therapeutic properties of different materials and how they affect clients. I will introduce Nonna Allbach, a practising art therapist and her developments, whilst focusing on issues affecting accessibility to materials. Furthermore, I will be considering the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, whilst considering the new COVID-19 guidelines for materials and infection control within art therapy. Catherine Moon focuses heavily on the impacts of different media. Moon highlights that materials are a vital component in being able to surface thoughts, feelings and ideas, bringing the unconscious into a more tangible and sensual form. Significantly, Sean McNiff, a practising art therapist, states, the characteristics of different materials are believed to have an impact on the therapy by evoking specific physical encounters, psychic responses and emotional states. Furthermore, Elizabeth Burns qualitative study on art materials used within adults found that the materials themselves are integral parts of the therapeutic process and help facilitate the therapeutic journey for the clients. Burns discusses whether traditional fine art materials, found objects, craft materials or technology based media serve as a sensory based tangible equivalent of the vocabulary used in written or spoken exchange. Rubin, 1984, adds that the art therapist needs to consider the relevance of the medium to any creative intention. But most of the literature on the therapeutic impact of materials aims to instruct art therapists on how to direct clients to not only determine which materials can be utilised in order for the client to meet his or her goals, but also to use materials that will not hinder the therapeutic process with the client. The expressive therapies continuum aids the therapist in choosing a directive for a client. This model incorporates four different levels, whereas the media dimension variables categorise 2D and 3D media according to their properties. Most studies or theories on the therapeutic characteristics of materials aim to inform the art therapist on which media to use with different types of clients whereas others emphasise the crucial importance of client choice to the therapeutic process. It is a privilege to introduce Nona Orbach, an Israeli multidisciplinary artist, blogger, teacher, art therapist and facilitator of art therapy workshops globally. Client choice of material is the cornerstone of her art therapy theory and practice. Here's Nona to explain the importance of art therapy. Do you think the art therapy training does look into enough about the therapeutic impact of materials? No. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere in the world. There are schools that are better with it. Mm. First of all, in Israel, there are millions of art therapists. In the, uh, I've, been in, I've been giving a session in a um, psychiatric ward in the hospital. There was a conference. Yeah. Uh, the psychiatrist opened the morning and said there are 30 art therapists 30 uh, expressive therapists of all kinds wow. in a psychiatric hospital in Israel. This is new. It, it's the, 20 years ago. I, I could not imagine such, such a thing. And he said, we cannot work without you because you're working under the language. 
you cannot work with a psychotic person talking to him. I mean, maybe. But it's better doing a movement or, or art or something else. And, and you're doing this phase that we cannot go into. Mm. That you can talk about the images, of course. But the images are like a, the end of it. Okay, he drew a person. He drew a, his mother. He, okay, that's important. But leave it to the end. How it was done is more important than what was done. Yeah. Especially for our therapists, especially. Much of the literature attempts to inform art therapists how to choose materials for that particular client, whereas Nonna believes that choice is paramount for the client in therapy. And choice is really very important because for me, if you read a bit in my book, you, you understand already that this is the, the, the path to understanding what the blueprint is. Because through the choice, choices are always authentic. Even if they're, I don't know, it's, it looks like uh, Disneyland or whatever. There is some authenticity there. It has a meaning, let's say. Maybe it's not authentic, but it has a meaning. And I want to see that in order for me to get to know the person. So, Similarly, Carl Rogers' humanistic, person-centered approach is a technique in which the client takes an active, autonomous role in the therapy sessions. The therapist typically refrains from offering advice or making a formal diagnosis. Instead, the primary role of the therapist is to listen. The humanistic approach supports the importance of client choice and forms the theoretical basis of Nonna's philosophy. In her paper on materials in art and art therapy, Nonna observed a key question when entering the art therapy space. What materials do I feel like using now? She suggests that whenever the creator trusts his or her choice of material, something meaningful occurs. She states, choice of matter is never coincidental, tending to shed light on the creator's deepest emotional, mental realms. She believes that the selection of materials is often governed by unconscious processes, rather than logic or conscious knowledge, and is therefore a real impartial choice. The importance of client choice of materials is illustrated by the tree metaphor. Nonna developed the tree metaphor, which enables reflection into the entire therapeutic process, beginning with material in its raw state, through its selection and unique utilisation, and finally to its culmination into meaningful structure and content in art therapy. The root refers to the unconscious choice of material in its raw state before anything has been done. Secondly, the second phase refers upwards to the trunk, representing the creator's observation of the creation. And finally, the tree branches are a metaphor for its expansive and integrative expression. Sometimes these are sequenced chronologically, while at other times they coincide and overlap. In conclusion, it would appear that despite lack of attention to the subject, it is important that art therapists are aware of the therapeutic qualities and potential impact of different art materials and mediums, so they can direct the client's choice according to their individual needs. However, others, most importantly Nonna Orbach, argue that client choice is paramount, as it is a crucially important signifier of the client's unconscious need, leading into the therapeutic process illustrated by the tree metaphor. This reflects the humanistic approach to therapy that considers the client unconsciously and it holds the keys to their own recovery. As previously mentioned, there is little research into this aspect of art therapy. But in the real world of art therapy, choice is not necessarily an option, as access to materials is limited by a number of issues affecting accessibility. These include funding and the evolution of what are considered of art materials. Since 2010, the British government has implemented an austerity agenda. This has involved a series of sustained cuts in public spending with the aim to reduce the budget deficit and welfare spending. This has caused a significant decline in the public sector, consequently impacting on art therapist work, sourcing and budgeting for materials. Many believe that since 2010, the Tory government has implemented policies that are toxic to mental health and well-being. However, the therapeutic effect of creativity has long been recognised, pushing the government to introduce arts on prescription and social prescribing.
arts and prescription is not to replace conventional therapies, but rather to act as an adjunct, helping people in their recovery through creativity and increasing social engagement. Although the schemes are varied in their approaches and settings, the common theme is that there is a referral process and creative activities take place in the community facilitated by artists rather than therapists. However, a number of problems exist within the arts and prescription programme, such as support, funding, structures and some risks. It must be pointed out that art materials are not cheap and are rarely free. It would seem that the government is over-reliant on a taken-for-granted, underfunded, voluntary sector to improve mental health and well-being and to reduce reliance on medication, which lines the already bulging pockets of the pharmaceutical industry. There remains concerns about funding for community providers. The Secretary of State for Health and Social Care has worried the sector in the past by referring to provision as cheap by comparison to medical interventions or even free. The September 2020 National Voices Report articulates the importance of improving link workers' roles and management and also supporting the infrastructure of voluntary and community sector so that it can meet the mental health sector on equal terms. In March of 2020, the COVID pandemic hit and many countries throughout the world enforced isolation. The World Health Organization released a statement suggesting that the COVID pandemic had disrupted or halted critical mental health services. However, it appears in the UK, COVID-19 appears to have boosted accessibility and funding for people to access the arts. Arts Council England said, investing in a thriving cultural sector at the heart of communities is a vital part of helping the whole country to recover from the pandemic. Arts Council England and charities are providing creative art materials and ideas to children in Essex during the COVID-19 pandemic. The partnership encourages creativity, which is essential for the health and mental well-being of children and young people. To COVID-19, BAT introduced guidelines giving practical information around infection control and materials, stating that therapists should now be providing clients with their own materials and regular disinfection of equipment and materials used. Some argue that anything can be an art material, and the choice of materials should not be limited to traditional mediums such as pencils, pens, paints and charcoal. What is the studio all about? A studio can be a bench mm. in a park. It can be anything. It doesn't, it's, it's not about the materials. Of course, no. we need, you need basic stuff and uh, it's very good if you, you can afford it, but that will not make a difference. A good therapist can work with nothing. We must think much more radically about improving the quality and in-depth understanding of materials when training art therapists. With only a handful in the UK actively involving students in the art creating, Art therapy trainings across the world lack insight and rely heavily on theoretical studies and creating artworks, however, not their relationship to the materials.